Okay, so now you're starting the, the second part of the second lecture. And the main conclusion of the first part was that radiation exchanges energy with atoms uh, just in specific values, namely integer multiples of uh, H nu, where H is the Planck constant and nu is the frequency of the radiation or the frequency of oscillation of the atom. So this, this was uh, the very first, uh, uh, well, when we tell the history of quantum mechanics, this is the very first uh, um, um, important uh, result that tells you that something seems to be uh, uh, happening in such a way that the classical theory has to be modified. And um, another very important celebrated example about that is what we call the photoelectric uh, effect. And the second character that will enter now is Albert Einstein. So you're learning relativity in the early morning, at least in this week, and you probably heard already about, about Einstein. So he was the, 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 let's say, the discoverer, the inventor, and depending on how you, how you think about these things, of relativity. And in the very same year, uh, when Einstein published the paper that gave birth to special relativity, he also published a paper explaining what is called the photoelectric effect. And this actually, this was a very um, um, important year for Einstein's career. He published three amazing papers in 1905 that changed completely his life and changed completely physics. So it's really, it's really a remarkable year for, for physics. Um, okay, so I want to explain to you what is the photoelectric effect is about and how Einstein solved the, the riddle that uh, people uh, uh, encountered when trying to explain the photoelectric effect. Okay, so um, let me start by saying the following. So in, in, it was around 1887 that this physicist, Heinrich Hertz, uh, made several experiments uh, regarding the production and the detection of electromagnetic waves, okay? And uh, I, I don't want to explain all the details, but part of his setup in order to, to, to produce and detect gravitational waves was the emission of a spark between two electrodes, okay? And while performing the experiments, Hertz uh, uh, noticed that um, when the electrodes uh, were not uh, uh, um, were not under light, they tended to emit sparks more difficultly. So, if you shed light on the electrodes then it's easier to produce a spark. And, well, if you think about that, this does not contradict the classical theory, right? Because let's think together. So the electrodes, so you see here an example of electrodes. You have a plate of a metal, made of a metal, and you have here another plate, another metal plate. If you send light, to, to the metal, the metal is composed, well, the property of a metal, that it is a very good conductor. So they, it has several free electrons uh, traveling around. And now if you send light towards the electrode, you're going to give energy to the electrode. And the classical theory says that, well, uh, the electromagnetic wave has an electric field, and when this hits the electrode, 
it will make the electro the electron uh, oscillating more and more until at some point that the electron will be uh, emitted from the metal. There is nothing uh, um, 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 weird about that. Uh, there is a question, just a second. Um, based on the plates on that circuit, have the same size? Can we think they have same polarities? Uh, and no, because th there is the battery, but I will talk about that in a moment. Uh, but thanks for the question. So classically, if you send light towards an electrode, you're giving energy to the system. And therefore, there is nothing wrong in saying that if you have light uh, uh, hitting the plate, then you can eject more electrons than when there is no light. Okay. So this thing that Hertz uh, observed did not contradict the classical theory. Um, and this, this, uh, uh, this phenomenon of metals uh, uh, plates emitting electrons because of the incident light is what we call the photoelectric uh, effect. And in principle, the very existence of the, 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 the photoelectric effect is not in contradiction with the classical theory of light. Uh, but as we're going to see, when you try to understand the details behind the photoelectric uh, effect, then you're going to start seeing some contradictions with the classical theory. So uh, Hertz had a student, uh, Philip Lenard, and Philip Lenard decided to explore more details about the photoelectric effect. And in order to do that, he constructed this circuit here, where you have the electrode, so you have a plate, a metal plate here, a metal plate here. These uh, electrodes, they are inside this chamber here, that inside of it you have vacuum, in such a way that if you emit an electron from this plate, there is nothing that will, uh, um, that will uh, uh, interact with the electron. So the electron can move in this region without suffering any, any influence of uh, other things. And these plates are connected with these wires here. So there is this wire, there is this wire to a battery. And you can measure uh, uh, the potential difference between the terminals of this battery using some, some equipment for that. So you can, you can, can measure this, so you know how much is the potential difference that this battery provides to the electrodes. And you can also measure the current, the electric current that flows in the circuit by putting here in the circuit an, an, an ammeter. So you can measure the current and you can uh, uh, measure the potential difference, okay? And what are, so, so Leonard construct this setup and he could play with some variables of the system. So he could play with the intensity of the light that he was throwing to the, to the electrode. He could also play with the frequency of light that he was throwing. And he could, he could also play with the potential difference. So imagine that this is a battery that you can control. Uh, I mean, you can dial. What is the value of the potential difference that you're providing to the to the to the circuit? Okay. And so he had this device and he wanted to understand more properties about the photoelectric effect. And when he started to analyze the details of the results, um, uh, it was understood that the properties of the photoelectric effect were in contradiction with the predictions of the classical theory. And I'm going to try to explain to you what are these, these problems. Okay, so first, let us look to this plot here, where I have in the vertical axis, 
the current that is measured by the circuit. And in the horizontal axis, I have the potential difference uh, furnished by the, the battery. So if you have some, uh, if you're throwing light to the electrode with some specific intensity I naught and frequency nu, then you can measure the current. And you see that, um, you see that I can dial the potential difference in such a way that if the potential difference is zero, okay, so if the potential difference is zero, then if I shed light on the electrode, I see some electric current. So what I'm saying is the following. If I throw light to this electrode, even if the battery is turned off, or, well, I should say, if the battery is, uh, is, for, is, is giving the potential difference equals to zero, then light will hit this electrode, electrons will be emitted, and some of these electrons will hit the other plate. And therefore, I'm going to measure some current here. Okay? Now, assume that I start um, increasing the value of the, the potential difference. And what you can see from this plot here is that as soon as I start increasing the value of the potential difference, the current increases just a little bit, but then it becomes essentially constant. Okay? And we can try to understand that from the point of view of the circuit. And here is the explanation. So if I increase the potential difference, I'm giving more and more uh, um, motivation, let's put like that, for this electric charge to hit the other plate. So when the electron is emitted, it can have whatever velocity, so it can be going up, it can be going down. But when I put some positive potential difference here, I make this electron to he will suffer the action of an electric force and trying to, to, to pull the electron towards this plate. So if I increase the, the, the potential difference, I will facilitate the, the, the life of the electron in such a way that I will help it to hit the other plate. So you see that before, when I didn't have any potential difference, the electron, some electrons would hit this plate, but some of them would not. And when I turn on the battery and, and put some positive potential difference, more electrons will hit the plate. But since this is a small thing, there is not, uh, I mean, s much more electrons to hit the plate. So soonish, all electrons will hit the plate and you have a fixed value of the current. Okay, so this is what we see here. There is a tiny increase in the value of the current, but then it becomes constant. And this constant value of the current is called the saturation current. Uh, I see that there is a question in the chat, just a second. Is VB a retarding potential difference applying by the battery? So I can, VB, yes, it, it is a retarding potential. I, I'm going to speak about that now. Um, so, if I give a positive potential difference, I help the electron to go from one plate to the other. As soon as light can remove the electron from the first plate, the potential difference will help the electron to cross that, that, that gap and go to the second plate. But now I can also dial the potential difference to become negative. And when I do that, um, I create um, now a force that goes to the opposite direction and tries to pull back the electron to the first plate, okay? So if I start dialing the potential to a negative value, I will see that some electrons will still hit the plate, but the number will decrease, and therefore the current will decrease. But at some point, this... Uh, negative potential will be so huge that no electrons will hit the other plate and, and there is no current generated in this circuit. 
So this, um, this potential is some sort of, it, it plays the role of, uh, you know, of something that tries to get back the electrons that were emitted by light. So this VB is nothing but uh, uh, the value of the potential. And you see that there is the negative sign because this is negative different, potential difference. And what I'm saying is that there is a, a, a value of which is minus VB that makes the current to vanish. Okay. I hope the physical picture is clear to you. And you see that this, this blue curve is for a fixed uh, uh, intensity, I is not, of the light, and also for a fixed frequency of light, nu. Now, I just decide to, um, to throw uh, light with, uh, uh, with a larger intensity, I not prime. And when I do so, what I observe in the setup uh, uh, by Leonard uh, is that the saturation current, namely this value, is bigger with respect to the saturation current uh, in the previous situation. And again, you can explain that uh, more or less from the classical theory that this should increase because now you're giving, if you increase the intensity, you're giving more energy to the metal and therefore you're giving more energy to the free electrons in such a way that you can remove more and more electrons. Okay. Um, but of course, um, uh, something it's weird because uh, uh, now if I start making the potential difference uh, to decrease, then you see that well, you would think that now I'm removing uh, uh, electrons with more energy, right? Because I'm giving more energy to them, so they will be removed with more and more energy. But actually, the potential difference, namely the electric energy that you have to give to stop those electrons, is the same as in the previous case. So the, 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 the potential that uh, uh, will stop the electrons is exactly the same uh, that you needed to stop the electrons in the previous situation where you were sending light with less energy than in the second situation. And then classical, the classical description is, 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 gets crazy. I mean, how do I explain that? So, this is something that has to be clear to you. It is not the existence of the photoelectric effect that is a problem for classical physics. It is the fact that for a given frequency, if you change the intensity of, of the radiation, you get the same uh, potential that stops the electrons from moving to one plate to the other, okay? Um, so, um, you see that this meeting point is problematic for classical theory. But let's, let's try to interpret the results. So the production of an electric current uh, is, is totally fine with classical physics. We are just giving energy and removing electrons from one plate to the other. This will produce a current. Um, when the electron is uh, uh, removed, then of course, um, um, if you're removing an electron from a metal, then the metal now has a positive charge. And this positive charge will try to pull back the electron. And then you help the electron to cross the way until the other plate by giving some potential difference. This is what we observed. Um, also, if you, if you look into a, a metal, uh, ah, there is a question, does, 
i not prime uh, and i not have the same peak point well uh, that peak was related to the black body radiation here i'm not talking about black bodies anymore i'm just talking about some radiation that i'm sending to a plate okay so there is no no that, that, that curve that we discussed does not describe the system that I'm looking at here. Okay? I hope this is clear now. Hello. Hi. Please, I, I didn't get a part of my VP uh, will. Uh, we're saying after the electrons leaving the first plate, uh, this plate become positive because it's uh, electrons emitted from it. Uh, VB is a potential difference between this two, this plate and those electrons. Is the potential difference between the plates? I, I'm, I'm talking about VB. Yes, VB is the potential difference between the plates such that no electron that is emitted from one plate will be able to reach the second plate. But this is a potential difference between the plates. Who creates this potential difference? Is this because the battery or because... Uh... Because this is, this is precisely the, the function of a battery. The battery establishes a potential difference uh, between two points that are connected to it. And if you see here in my uh, drawing, you see that this plate is connected to this side of the battery, and this plate is connected to this side of the battery. And therefore, this battery will establish a potential difference between this plate and this plate. Okay, this potential difference will help electron to pass through the external circuit. But we, we said that uh, VB prevent electrons uh, to go to the other plate. Yeah, so if the potential difference is positive, then you help the electron to cross this way and go to the other plate. But you can invert the polarity of this battery. You can make now the potential difference uh, negative. And this will have the opposite effect. Instead of uh, 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 helping the electron to go to the other plate, it will try to bring back the electron to the previous plate. So this, you can adjust that just by, by choosing different values of the potential. Okay, that's mean if if we want to know this value, just what, what we want just only to reverse the direction of the battery to get VP. Mm -hmm. So you have here um, an equipment that measures the current. So you start dialing your uh, battery in such a way that the, 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 the value of this current will be zero. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So there are more questions uh, in the chat. Let me check. Uh, please, I want to know the importance of the light source. Um, so for the moment, uh, the, the source is not so relevant in the sense that uh, uh, we don't care much, I mean, what produced the light, but rather we are just assuming that there is light coming to these electrodes that have a well-defined intensity and frequency. And the fact that the light hits the plate is responsible to removing the electrons, okay? So it's not about... Uh, uh, if this light is coming from a flashlight, if this light is coming from the sun, if this light is coming, it's not important for us to discuss this phenomenon. But of course, I mean, you can change the nature of light, namely you can change the frequency and the intensity if you change the source. 
Uh, then Abdallah, yes, I agree. I can see it ejects electrons, but I was thinking the electrons are being transmitted as a result of the potential difference. Um, so be careful with that. Um, if you, I mean, just think about the system as, um, you know, if you don't send light, if you don't throw light to the electrode, the electrons are sitting here on the plate and the metal has a binding force that makes the electron to be restricted to its surface, okay? So if you do nothing about that, the electrons will be sitting on the metal, okay? If you put a potential difference between the plates, but you don't do anything to remove the electrons from the plate, this is not going to make an electron jump from this plate to the other. You have to first remove the electron from the metal, okay? Because there is a binding force, the metal wants to keep the electron. And now, this, when, when, when you are able to remove the electron from the metal, the potential difference will do the job of bringing it to the other plate. Okay? I hope this clarifies. If not, let me know. Uh, normally, electrons were fixed and need energy to make electron vibrate and move it. Exactly, that's correct. Uh, to understand this, try to understand. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so I think now, uh, Seth, you, you understood, right? So it's not that electrons, so the electrons, were part of the metal and light is just going there and kicking out the electrons from the plate to this region here. If you don't send light, the electrons will just remain seated in the, in the metal. Okay. okay, so let me go to, ah, are electrons emitted for all energy of incident light source, I think this is possible for light with energy greater or equal to the ionization of the electron. This is a very good point. Uh, as we're going to see, uh, it's not possible to remove electrons with any values of energy that you want. There is a, a threshold value. There is a value that once you you hit this value, then electrons can be emitted. So, and you are correct, this is related to the structure of the material, right? I mean, there is a minimum amount of energy that you have to give to the electron to win the force that the atoms that make the material, once the force that these atoms make to keep the electrons there, okay? Okay, so um, now, uh, okay, there is another H nu is greater than H nu threshold. Yes, exactly. Uh, now uh, let's uh, um, uh, try to define mathematically what we mean by VB, okay? So VB, as I said, is the value of the potential difference that stops the electrons from going to one plate to the other. But let's think about it. So when you, when you manage to remove electrons from the plate, electrons can be ejected with all kinds of velocities, okay? So it's not true that all electrons will be emitted with the same velocity. So you can think uh, um, of VB as being the value of the potential difference that will give electric energy to those electrons that equates to the kinetic energy of those electrons. What is the kinetic energy? The kinetic energy is the energy that a particle has if it has a velocity. So what I'm saying is that if the electron, when it is emitted by the metal, 
it will have a kinetic energy. But now, if I give to the electron the same amount of energy now being of electric nature, so it's electric uh, uh, energy that wants to make the electron to go back, the threshold value will be the one that equates to the kinetic energy of the electron. Okay? So, and this has a mathematical expression. So the, the kinetic energy of a particle, this is this you probably learned uh, in the elementary courses, uh, physics courses, but if you didn't learn, you can you can tell me. So the kinetic energy of a body with mass m and velocity v m is given by half of the mass of the, the, the body, in this case, the mass of the electron, times the square of the velocity. So I, if I take now the fastest electron that will be ejected by the plate, I call the fastest electron the one which has velocity v max, v m. So this is the kinetic energy of the fastest electron that I remove from the metal. And I'm saying that the kinetic energy must be equal in order to prevent the, the threshold energy that will prevent the electron to cross the plates is equal to the electric energy. And if you, if you don't, didn't learn that, pay attention to this, the, the electric energy is nothing but the charge of the particle. So in this case, E is the absolute value of the charge of the electron. We know that the electron has a negative charge. So E is the absolute value of the charge of the electron times the potential difference. So when the kinetic energy of the fastest electron equates the electric energy that opposes to the, to the motion of the electron, then I will be able to say that no electron that was emitted by the plate due to the incident light will cross to the other plate. So I'm just equating the energies, okay? Uh, let me check, there are some... Um, suppose more than one electron uh, were emitted and have different velocities. We'll sum up the individual kinetic. Uh, 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 see, um, what I'm saying here, um, I don't know if I'm, I'm pronouncing your name correctly, so Elise. Um, so what I'm saying here is that when you, when you throw light, you are going to have a distribution of electrons going out. Okay? But what I'm saying is that out of this, you know, uh, shower of electrons, choose the one which has the, 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 the biggest velocity. And this is Vmax. If I can um, prevent the fastest electron to cross the way from one plate to the other, then no other electron will be able to cross because this is the fastest one. This is the one with largest energy. So if I can make it stop, then no other elect electron will cross because it will either have the same energy, kinetic energy, or less because the velocity will be smaller. Okay? I hope this clarifies. Okay. So this equation here tells you that the maximal uh, uh, kinetic energy of the, of the fastest electron is, must be equal to EVB if I want to stop the electron. Um, so far, I changed the intensity um, of the light that was uh, uh, being th that was being thrown to the plates, but I didn't I didn't change uh, the frequency of the radiation. Okay, we saw that for radiations or uh, radiation with the same frequency but different intensity, 
the saturation current uh, changed. But Vb, which is the potential that stops the, the, the crossing of electrons, didn't change. Now I can ask what happens if I change the, um, the frequencies of the uh, emitted light. Uh, from the classical theory point of view, uh, as we were discussing before, if I change the frequency, I'm not changing the, the energy that is transported by, by, by the, the wave, by, by the radiation. So if I change the frequency, I would not see anything new. But instead, Leonard managed to verify that if you change the frequency, you see different curves. They have the same shape, but they have different values for VB. Okay, so you see that as soon as I increase the frequency, so I go to, from new one to new three, the value of VB gets more and more negative. Okay, so this is in contradiction to the classical theory. The classical theory tells you that the energy does not depend on the frequency. And you are seeing here explicitly that if I change the frequency, I need more electric energy to stop the electrons, okay? So there is a question by Seth. Um, which component in the setup is responsible for the velocities of the electrons? Is the potential difference from the cells? Well, uh, the, there are several things that will uh, be responsible for the velocity of the electrons. And the most important one is how the electron is uh, behaving inside the metal. So you can remove electrons that are in outermost layers of the metal or more let's say inside the metal and this will make a difference on wh what is the value of the velocity of the ejection of this electron okay so this is not a simple thing to to make systematic okay okay good um uh, i think if you a new one because it is in the negative so uh, this is, uh, uh, thanks for pointing this out. Please do not confuse this V, which stands for the potential difference, with nu, which is the Greek letter for, for frequency. So this is nu1, nu2, nu3, nu1, nu2, nu3. And V is the value that you see in the, in the horizontal axis, okay? So this is new, not V. Um, okay, so, so far, I just told you the outcomes of the, the experiments by Lenard uh, and how things do not fit with the classical picture because classically, we do not expect to see this difference of the VB for different frequencies. And also, uh, we did not expect to see the same VB for radiation with the same frequency, but with different intensities, okay? And now comes Einstein. Oh, okay, so. Uh, mu resembles the small v. Yes, so uh, be careful, it's new. It's, it's, you write new. Uh, please, was Einstein referring to photons from last statement of, of the right-hand side of the slide? Uh, uh, okay, I, I'm going to get there. But uh, yes, Einstein was... Uh, uh, yes, uh, you're right. Einstein was, was, was referring to photons. I'm, I'm going to get there. Thanks. Um, so, um, in 1905, Einstein tried to explain 
uh, what was going on with the photoelectric effect. And Einstein, I mean, as, as you, you are going to learn, Einstein was very bold in his statements, very creative and highly known standards. And Einstein just, just, just did uh, something that uh, was, was not obvious from that time. So as you, as you heard, uh, at this time, people knew about Planck's result, right? Planck said that radiation will exchange energy with atoms in quanta of energy, but nobody really understood that because there was no uh, uh, fundamental explanation for this. But Einstein uh, uh, thought the following, I want to describe the photoelectric uh, phenomena and the classical theory of electromagnetic waves is not doing the job. So what happens if I take seriously what Planck said, that light uh, will exchange energy with the material as in quanta of energy? So Einstein decided to take seriously the quantization of energy. And he proposed that electromagnetic wave or electromagnetic radiation was made of quanta of energy. So you have, when you talk about radiation, you can think of it as just a collection of small packets of energy, okay? So this brings back the interpretation of light as not being a wave, but being composed by particles. Okay, so it's like light now is a collection of particles and th those particles carry energy H nu. So the simplest scenario that you can use to explain the photoelectric e effect is the following. So you have a light particle that, uh, let me go back to the slide. So instead, instead of thinking of this as a wave hitting the metal, you can think of this as a beam of particles that hit the plate. And this beam of particles will hit the plate. And now you have a particle that will collide with the electron. So you have really a collision of two particles. And this particle of light will eject the electron. So you send a very energetic particle that ejects the electron. And this was the, the, the picture that Einstein uh, put forward to explain the photoelectric uh, effect. Okay. Um, but before, so I skipped this slide, this, this is important. But, um, but since we are running out of time and I don't want to rush with that, uh, I will continue tomorrow. And essentially, uh, tomorrow, I'm going to explain to you this equation, which is Einstein's equation for the photoelectric uh, effect. And we are going to, um, you're going to see, I will post these slides today. There are two exercises in this slide. So there is exercise number one and exercise number two in, on page 14. Um, I would like to ask you to think about these exercises, okay? At least exercise one. You can think about exercise one for tomorrow, and we can uh, we can talk. Uh, but tomorrow we are going to discuss, uh, we're going to finish the photoelectric effect, and start discussing other phenomena that were suggesting that actually treating light as a wave was uh, was not totally correct, and this will give birth to the very fundamental principles of, of quantum theory. So with that, I will uh, stop the lecture. We still have four minutes. So if you want to ask questions, uh, please go ahead. But I will stop the recording, okay?